Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Warner, and today I'm going to be talking about polynomial and rational functions. A polynomial function has this form, y equals a sub n x to the n plus a m minus 1 x to the n minus 1 dot 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 a1 x plus a0, where the a0, a1 through a n are all real numbers. Um, don't worry too much about this messy looking form. When we do some examples in just a moment, it'll be clear what a polynomial is. Um, if a sub n is not zero, then n is the degree of the polynomial. In other words, the degree is just the highest power that appears in the polynomial. Let's get right to some examples. y equals 5x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus x squared minus 2x plus 1. This is a polynomial of degree 4. So this is a fourth degree polynomial because the highest power is 4. y equals x minus 1. This is a degree 1 polynomial or first degree polynomial. Note that x minus 1 could be written as x to the 1 minus 1. So this is a polynomial of the first degree. Polynomials of degree 1 are also called linear polynomials or linear functions. y equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 1 has a degree of 2. And that's also known as a quadratic polynomial or quadratic function. y equals 5 is a degree 0 polynomial. Note that 5 could also be written as 5 times x to the 0. A 0 degree polynomial is also called a constant function y equals 4 minus x, this is another degree 1 polynomial. Be careful. If you want to know the degree, it might be helpful to rewrite the function in descending order of exponents. So 4 minus x is the same as negative x to the 1 plus 4. This last one, y equals x squared plus x minus x to the 1 half plus 1, this is not a polynomial at all. Polynomials cannot have fractional or negative exponents. So that one's not a polynomial. A rational function is a quotient of polynomials. In other words, one polynomial divided by another polynomial. Let's look at some examples. y equals x minus 1. This is a polynomial, and every polynomial is also a rational function because a polynomial can just be written over the polynomial 1. So this is a quotient of the polynomial x minus 1 divided by the polynomial 1. Clearly the next one, y equals x squared minus 3x plus 2 over 2x minus 3, is a rational function because it's a quotient of a second degree polynomial divided by a first degree polynomial. y equals x to the minus 1 this is also a rational function. It's a rational function because it can be written as 1 over x, which is the quotient of the polynomial 1 divided by the polynomial x. In other words, negative exponents are OK for rational functions. x to the half, or the square root of x, that is not a rational function. Roots or fractional exponents are not allowed. The domain of a function is the set of all values that can be plugged into the function for x that result in a numerical output. Let's look at a couple of examples. First, a polynomial example. So y equals 5x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus x squared minus 2x plus 1. The domain of this function is all real numbers. Because you could plug in any real value for x, and you will get a real output. In fact, every polynomial function has domain all real numbers. Next, let's look at a rational function that's not a polynomial. y equals x squared minus 3x plus 2 over 2x minus 3. The domain of a rational function is all real numbers except where the denominator is 0. So to find the problem x values, we just set the denominator equal to 0. So I'm going to add 3 
So we have 2x equal to 3, and then divide by 2. So x equals 3 halves is the only x value not in the domain of this rational function. So in other words, the domain is all reals except x equals 3 halves. Let's look at another example. For which non-negative value of a is the expression 1 over 16 minus a squared undefined? So we need to check where 16 minus a squared is equal to 0. We could do this a couple of ways. I'll go ahead and factor this as the difference of two squares and set each factor equal to 0. Add a, add a, get 4 equals a. And it says for which non-negative value, so a equals 4 is the answer. Notice that the other value is the negative value, so we don't want that one for this particular problem. The vertical line x equals a is a vertical asymptote for the graph of the function y equals f of x. If y approaches infinity or minus infinity, as x approaches a from either the left or the right or both. Uh, let me just draw a simple picture of a vertical asymptote. So maybe we have a function like this. And notice that as x approaches this value, let's make it concrete, let's say it's 2. As x approaches 2 from the right, we go off to infinity. And as x goes to 2 from the left, we go off to minus infinity. So x equals 2 is a vertical asymptote for this function that I just drew. In order to find vertical asymptotes of a rational function, we just need to use the following very simple theorem on the ACT. If the rational function y equals p of x over q of x has the property that q of a equals 0 and p of a is not 0, then x equals a is a vertical asymptote for the graph. In other words, if we plug in a value and it makes the denominator zero, but it doesn't make the numerator zero, then we definitely have a vertical asymptote there. Okay, in this example, if x equals a is a vertical asymptote of y equals x squared minus five over x minus three, then a equals, well, we just have to check when is the denominator equal to zero. Oh, that happens at x equals 3. So x equals a is a vertical asymptote, so a is equal to 3. Notice that I didn't even bother checking whether 3 made the numerator 0 or not. On the ACT, it never will. You don't have to worry about that. Because in the case where it does, the question is too advanced for a standardized test. So technically, we're supposed to check that the denominator is 0 and the numerator is not. But if you just check that the denominator is 0, you're perfectly safe and you will get the correct answer. The horizontal line with equation y equals b is a horizontal asymptote for the graph of y equals f of x. If y approaches b as x gets larger and larger or smaller and smaller, as in very large in the negative direction. Let me go ahead and draw a picture that shows a horizontal asymptote. Let's make this 3. Okay, so this is the line y equals 3. And here's a graph approaching that horizontal asymptote in the positive direction. It's a common misconception that a graph could never cross a horizontal asymptote. It's actually okay. So, for example, in this picture, again, if this is 3, y equals 3 is also a horizontal asymptote, even though the graph crosses it. Horizontal asymptotes only tell you about the very end behavior of the graph. It doesn't care about what happens in the middle of the graph. To find the horizontal asymptotes of a rational function, it suffices to know the following three rules. The first rule is that if the numerator has a higher degree than the denominator, then the rational function has no horizontal asymptote. 
The second rule is that if the numerator has a lower degree than the denominator, then the rational function does have a horizontal asymptote, and it's the horizontal line y equals zero, always. The third rule is that if the numerator and denominator have equal degree, then the rational function has the horizontal asymptote y equals m over n, where m is the leading coefficient of the numerator and n is the leading coefficient of the denominator. Don't worry, we're going to look at an example for each of these rules. First for rule one. Find all horizontal asymptotes of y equals x squared minus 5 over x minus 3. Notice that the polynomial in the numerator has degree 2, and the polynomial in the denominator has degree 1. So the numerator has a higher degree, therefore this rational function has no horizontal asymptote. Next, let's find the horizontal asymptotes of y equals x minus 3 over x squared minus 5. This time, the numerator has degree 1 and the denominator has degree 2. So the numerator has a lower degree than the denominator, which means that y equals 0 is a horizontal asymptote for this rational function. Let's find all horizontal asymptotes of y equals 5x squared plus 2x minus 3 over 3x squared minus 7. Both the numerator and denominator here have degree 2. They have equal degree, which means that we just take the coefficients of the highest power of x, which is 2 here, and the answer is y equals 5 over 3. Let's look at some more examples of problems involving asymptotes. Which of the following lines is an asymptote of the graph of y equals 1 minus x over 2 plus x? Well, remember, for vertical asymptotes, we just check when the denominator is 0. We get the equation x equals negative 2. Oh, that's not an answer choice. So let's check horizontal asymptote. For this, we look at the degree of the polynomials. In this case, both the numerator and denominator have degree 1. So we take the coefficient of x to the 1, and we get y equals negative 1 over 1, or y equals negative 1, and that's choice D. If you're having trouble seeing that, it might help to rewrite the rational function as y equals negative 1x to the 1 plus 1 over 1x to the 1 plus 2. Notice I just rearranged the two terms both in the numerator and denominator and I rewrote negative x as negative 1x and x as 1x. And you could see where the negative 1 over 1 comes from clearly. One more example. Consider the rational function r of x equals x squared minus 5 over x minus 3. Let m equal r of 5. Let n be the number of horizontal and or vertical asymptotes. They're off of the graph of r. What is the value of m times n? Okay, this combines lots of things about rational functions. Let's start with computing m. m is r of 5. That means we're going to plug a 5 in for x into the rational function. So we're replacing x here and here by 5. So what is that? 25 minus 5 over 2, which is 20 over 2, or 10. So m is 10. n is the number of horizontal and or vertical asymptotes. Well, there's a vertical asymptote of x equals 3, and because the degree of the polynomial on top is higher than the degree on bottom, there are no horizontal asymptotes. So altogether, there is one asymptote. Finally, m times n is 10 times 1, which is just 10. Choice A.